Well, hello there. We are now on lesson number four of graph transformations. Y equals negative f of x. Very quick recap. There are six transformations we need to be aware of in higher maths. And we are now moving on to the third. To introduce this, let's look back to y equals x squared. I'm sure everybody in the class can graph that, no problem whatsoever. And you know that if you've got a positive x squared, then it means your parabola is going to be, just like Ryan every day in maths, it's going to be a smiley face. What happens though, if you have a negative x squared, how will that change the graph? You are perfectly right, yes. A negative means it will look like this, and it will be a sad face, just like Erin when she has no maths homework. Really what we're doing here is the negative in front of the x squared is flipping the graph in the x axis. So it's reflecting it over there. And really we're changing the y coordinate from a positive to a negative. Because y equals whatever x squared is, but we're saying here y is the negative of whatever x squared is. So putting a negative in front of the function will always have that effect. It'll always turn the smiley face into a sad face and vice versa. So how then would you graph y equals negative f of x if you knew f of x? Well, to sketch y equals negative f of x, what you do is you just reflect the uh, graph of f of x in the x axis. So you want to treat this x-axis just like a line of symmetry. Let's try this with an example then. So example one of two. Here is the graph of y equals f of x. Sketch the graph of y equals negative f of x. So we've got this line drawn in here, that is f of x, and we've got these points on the graph. So to sketch negative f of x, change that to a dotted line, and really to reflect it across the x-axis, what you do is you just take the bits that are above the x-axis and you reflect them below, and the bits that are below, you reflect them above. So if you think about this curve that's above the x-axis, that'll be just reflected below. So this point here above the x-axis will now be down here. Instead of crossing through the y-axis at 4, it's going to cross through at negative 4. With this point down here, you can see this section is below the x-axis, so that'll be reflected above. And again, this bit that's going away up into the positive direction will be going away down into the negative if you reflect it over. So your graph will look something like that. Thinking about the points as well, well, any point that lies on the x-axis is still going to lie on the x-axis. They would still be there, but the other points are going to change. So this point up here with negative 6, 10, well, your x axis value is just going to stay as negative 6, but instead of going up 10 in the y, it'll be going down to negative 10. Again, really what we're doing is we're taking the y value and we're changing it from positive to a negative or vice versa. So this y value here of 4 will be down at negative 4. This point here that's on the x-axis at 2, that's just going to stay as 2, 0, uh, because really negative 0 is just 0, so that'll stay as 2, 0. This point here that was 5, negative 3, change the y to a positive, so that'll then be up at 5, 3, and this point here, 9, 0, will stay as 9. It's just going to stay there, so your graph will look something like that. What you could always do is look at them side by side, and you could always have a look, and you can tell that the graph of negative f of x is just the exact same, it's just flipped in the x-axis. It may be best though looking at them like that. What you could always do is if you turn your head, or your jotter, or your laptop, if you turn it on its side, you should see that that x-axis is just your line of symmetry, and it should be symmetrical about that. Okay. Moving on to example number two. Given f of x equals 3 to the power of x plus 2, sketch the graph of f of x and negative f of x on the same diagram. So it's a trickier example here, but we want to start off sketching f of x, or just 3 to the power of x plus 2. So first thing you want to think is, well, 3 to the power of x is something that we dealt with in the last chapter. Do you remember what you call that? Sahana, what is it? That's right. It is an exponential. If you've got some number to the power of x, it is an exponential. And you should remember uh, what that looks like. A reminder, 
An exponential of that form, if you have y equals some number to the power of x, it'll always pass through the point 0, 1, and then 1a. So this um, equation here, with 3 to the power of x, will pass through 1, 3. We haven't done anything with the plus 2 yet, we've just sketched that exponential, y equals 3 to the power of x. The plus 2, think back to one of the transformations that we've already dealt with in the past. If you've got a plus 2 in the end, what does that do? That's right, it's just going to move the graph vertically up 2 units. So you're increasing the y value by 2. So instead of being at 0, 1, you move the y value up 2, so it'll be at 0, 3. Instead of uh, 1, 3, it'll move up to 1, 5. So your graph would look something like that. That's a sketched, sketched uh, f of x. So now we want to sketch negative f of x. Remember, if you've got f of x to sketch the negative of f of x, you're going to reflect it in the x-axis. So reflecting it over, uh, you would get something that looks like that. And remember, really, you're changing the y value. You're just taking the negative of whatever the y value is. So your points will be reflected over as well. So instead of 0, 3, you'll be at 0, negative 3. Instead of 1, 5, you'd be at 1, negative 5. And that is what you would get. So that would be the negative of f of x. Really, all you really need to do is remember that you're reflecting it over the x-axis. Give these questions a shot. Let me know if you need a hand. Good luck.